Again, good evening. This is the April 2nd Northampton City Council meeting. I'm Gina Louise Shara. I'm the council president and I will be presiding this evening. This meeting and all who participate in it with us on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. Uh, let me just check in right now. Laura, are you recording this through Zoom? Um, I'm starting right now. Okay. Um, and it's streaming live on NCTV. I'll go over that in one sec. Um, if you're watching on NC, uh, I'm sorry, Northampton Open Media on channel 15 or streaming it, and you want to participate in public comment or during the public hearing, um, please go to zoom.us and click join a meeting, then enter the meeting ID, which is 790-566-798. You can also call in at 1-928-436-2866 and you'll be prompted to enter that meeting ID, which again is 790-566-798. Uh, if you're asked for a participant number, just please enter the pound sign. Um, if you know that you absolutely do not want to make a comment, then I encourage you to watch by streaming on Northampton Open Media or on channel 15. Um, I'll just again say that, you know, we, the city councilors, Laura Kretzler, our fantastic administrative assistant, Mayor Narkowitz, um, and the other city representatives um, are, we are not together in the same room um, once again. This is our second meeting that that's the case. And, you know, I really continue to be grateful for the leadership and action that Northampton has taken to protect the public in which limits our ability to be together. Um, but we are together here on Zoom and we're here in Northampton and Florence and Leeds in our wards and in our neighborhoods that we represent with you, our constituents and our neighbors. And we thank you for continuing the safest practice we have to limit the spread of COVID-19. And that is by staying at home and not interacting with others outside of your house or home. So um, again, we're doing this for the common good and safety of all in our community. And to me, that's really the very essence of local government. So I wanna thank everyone who worked hard to make this meeting happen. We ask for your patience and your understanding if it takes some time to move through the items on the agenda. There may be pauses, silences, technical difficulties like we had before, um, but uh, we will work through them and we just ask that you be patient. Um, the recording of this meeting will be available as always at Northampton Open Media's Government Video Archive channel on YouTube. Never ending thanks to Northampton Open Media for ensuring the same access for the public while we are remote as they always provide. They are a remarkable community asset. Um, so we are gonna start with real-time public comments. I'll remind people that we always encourage comments also to be emailed to us if you don't wish to speak publicly. And you can do that at citycouncil at northamptonma.gov. Um, I, if you know that you do want to make a public comment, and these instructions I'm going to give right now also apply to the public hearing that's coming after this, um, it's very helpful if you please use your raise hand feature. To raise your hand, um, you click on the participant feature in the menu at the bottom of the screen. A column will open with the participant <coughs> of the meeting, um, and the, then the raise hand feature is at the bottom of the right hand column. You should see it. Um, if you're calling in by phone, you can also raise your hand. This is a cool trick I learned today um, by uh, <laughs> pressing pound nine, and then I will see a raised hand next to um, next to your name or number. Um, also, if you are calling, it looks like everyone is who is in here um, is using a name. If you call in with your number, you can change your number so it's not visible to the public. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to ask, okay, anyone who's not muted, please mute. Um, um, how's new and joyful? Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. I don't know what's going on there. Okay. Gina, I think it's better without the headphones just before we get started. Say again? Yeah, I think it's better for you without the headphones just before we get started. It's easier to hear you that way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, what I might do is when someone's making a comment, 
I will switch out of them. Uh, or if you go to next to mute, if you click the little I think it's better for the little up carrot next to your it's mute. Been Gina. Up for three minutes. Okay. Okay. Hold on. What I might do is when someone's making a comment, I will switch out of them. All right. Um, people are coming on and they're unmuting themselves. So if that continues to happen um, and they're doing it with not good intentions, I'm going to remove them, which is what I just did. Uh, okay, where was I? Um, so uh, please, so use the raise hand function uh, to raise your hand and tell me that you want to comment. Um, please wait to be recognized by me. My me, I will unmute you and ask if you want to make a comment. And if you'd like to have your video turned on, you may comment with or without video. Uh, when you begin, please state your name and your city or town for public records to ensure everyone is equal equal opportunity to speak. We ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. After three minutes, I'll ask you to finish your sentence. According to our rules, we do not respond during public comment as, is, as it is your time to speak. So while your comments should be directed to us, you will understand uh, when we don't respond. You may speak on any topic. It doesn't need to be an item on the agenda. But as this is an open line where anyone can come on, I'll do my best to act quickly. If someone is clearly acting in a way that is inappropriate and outside of what one would expect in council chambers. Um, and as I have just exercised, I will remove anyone I feel needs to be removed from the meeting. So I am going to look over this list. I don't see anybody with a raised hand. If somebody wants to provide public comment, please raise your hand using that feature that's at the bottom of the right hand screen. Um, oh, hold on, I see one. Okay, John Kowalski, you have been unmuted. Would you like uh, to join us by video or not? Uh, no, I don't have a video going. Okay. Um, so if you'd like to provide comment, please start. You have three minutes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is John Kowalski. Uh, I'm the owner of 8 Kingsley Avenue, which is a, it's a side street near Roberto's uh, restaurant in downtown. Uh, I'm joining the meeting in support of uh, ordinance 19.173, uh, uh, an ordinance to allow a change from one conforming use to another without a finding. Uh, first off, I, I would like to commend the council for proceeding with business in you know some some difficult times. Obviously, um, I did attend the meeting two weeks ago, and and I was actually impressed with how things went. Um, I think the you know virtual meeting is a good way to kind of you know obviously maintain the top priority of health and safety, but you know still try to keep some uh, forward progress going. Um, my property is one of the projects that's kind of being held up by the decision on the ordinance, so I'm, I'm frankly eager for a decision one way or another. Um, I do believe that the ordinance provides an opportunity for the council to uh, promote legislation that, you know, adheres to the desires laid out by numerous numerous initiatives to increase housing, particularly in the downtown area, while still maintaining a means to review the projects. Um, you know, the council still has um, authority and, and, and a means to review the projects that are above 2,000 square feet. So there is little risk that uh, the updated ordinance will create projects that are you know outside of its intent uh that's it thank you for your consideration um appreciate it thank you thank you so much okay is there anybody else who would like to comment i'm just going to check in with liz is that audio better I don't know if yes you yes that's much better thank you great thanks all right i'm i'm reluctant to stop public comment um unless i know that everyone who's spoken everyone uh who wants to speak has spoken um 
And so, you know what, I'm just gonna check in with a couple of these people that I see and ask, sorry to put you all on the spot, but I wanna make sure that if you wanna comment that you have the ability to do that. And, you know, I understand that this raise hand feature is new to people. So um, if you don't wanna be put on the spot, you can stream this on Northampton Open Media. Loretta, would you like to make a public comment? Um, not, at, not at this time, thank you. Thank you. Adele Dowell? Um, yes, no comment. Okay, thank you. Um, Barbara, would you like to make a public comment? No, no comment. Okay, thanks. Maybe you all just don't want to. Um, Jen, do you have a comment? Not at this time, thank you. Thanks. Let's see. Mark Mojo, do you have I'm a comment this evening? I'm all set for now. Thanks. Michael McCreary, would you like to make a public comment? No, it's okay. It's, it's too late. Just sit where you are. I'm going to take that as a no. <laughs> All right, everyone hang with me for one more sec. Councillor Quinlan, do you have two people? In, oh, is your father on? Would he like to make a comment? Hold on. I'm trying to unmute him. I seem to not be able to unmute him. He's thwarted me. <laughs> He's very powerful. Oh, here he is. Miss, Mr. Quinlan, would you like to comment? We just want to say how good looking the guy in the red uh, shirt is. <laughs> I thank you so much for that comment. <laughs> Um, okay, I think, I think I have covered everybody, which means, this is last chance, anyone raise your hand if you want to make a public comment. If not, uh, we will convene the meeting and I will ask Laura to please take the role. Sure. Councillor Dwight. You got it. Oh, I think he's into his own meeting. Um, <laughs> We can take that as a present. Yes, present. Councillor Foster. Your buttons ready. Okay, Coun Councillor Foster, not present. Um, Councillor Garrett. Present. Councillor Labarge. Present. Councillor Mayori. Present. Councillor Nash. Present. Councillor Quinlan. Present. Councillor Shara. Present. And Councillor Thorpe. Present. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Excellent, thank you. Um, okay, so first up on our agenda is a public hearing. So this is the public hearing to consider the FY 2021 water and sewer rates. Um, by order of the City Council, the Northampton City Council will hold a public hearing conducted via Zoom on today, April, 2nd, 2020 at 7.05 p.m. The City Council will consider the proposed FY 2021 water and sewer rates and hear all persons who wish to be heard thereon. Um, this hearing is being broadcast live on Comcast Channel 15. And uh, if you want to participate in this hearing, um, you can do it by Zoom. So uh, if you're listening, if you're streaming on Northampton Open Media or you're watching right now and you do want to um, participate in the public hearing, I'm gonna ask that you log on to Zoom um, and then the meeting number that we're in right now is 790-566-798. Uh, you can also call in at 1-253-215-8782. Um, and you can participate in this public hearing. 
Um, I am going to note that it has been posted to meet the legal requirements. Um, and with that being said, I'd like to like to move to open the public hearing, please. The motion to open the public hearing has been made by Councillor Dwight and seconded okay. by Councillor okay. Thorpe. Um, okay, so the motion, uh, the, the hearing has been opened. Um, so I'm going to first ask for proponents. I believe, uh, Mayor Narkowitz, you are going to speak to okay. the water and sewer rates. Yes, yeah, speak up. Just unmute myself. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor, and good evening, Councillors. Uh, yes, I am here to um, speak as a proponent of this uh, uh, proposed water and sewer rate for FY 2021. As you'll note in the order, uh, we are not recommending an increase in either the water or the sewer rates for FY 2021. So the recommendation is to maintain them um, at the current levels. Um, we, as you know, we are working very hard uh, to ensure that we are uh, managing these funds very wisely and working to be as efficient as possible. You also know that we have large capital projects that we are gearing up for. Um, so while we are not recommending a rate increase uh, for FY 2021, obviously we, that does not mean that we may not need rate increases in the future. As you know, over the last uh, four plus years, we have had some years with no increases and then other years with increases, but the recommendation this year is to leave the rates at their current level. So that is my basic statement, and um, I ask for the council's uh, quick consideration and, uh, and uh, their adoption of these rates for FY 2021 to go into effect on July 1st. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other proponents that would like to speak to the water and sewer rates? Again, um, you would indicate this to me by uh, raising your figurative hand in Zoom, which is down at the bottom. Um, it's under the participant column down at the bottom, right? Raise hand, okay. I, you wanna speak? Um, so, Councilor Labarge, I see that your hand is raised. Uh, where after the hearing, we will um, the council will speak to this uh, order when we take it up in the agenda. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I don't see any other proponents as of right now. Um, are there any opponents? Um, that wish to speak. Scrolling, I'm looking. Okay, I don't see any raised hands. So if there are no other- I move, I move to uh, close the public hearing. Second. Close the public hearing by Councilor Dwight and Councilor Labarge, was that a second from you? Yes, it was. Seconded by Councilor Labarge. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Okay, the hearing is officially closed. And we will take this up um, when we get into the finance agenda. Um, um, you know what, let's, can we go back? I've just been told something that I didn't realize, which is that all votes, while remote need to be done by roll call. So, so Laura, I'm gonna put you on the spot and could you do a roll call please for um, to close the public closing hearing? the public hearing? Yes. Okay, okay. Councilor uh, Dwight. Is it Councilor Dwight? Uh, yes. Um, Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Mayori. She's indicating yes, I believe. It's not working. Okay. Yeah. Councillor. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. 
Okay, so uh, the hearing is now closed. Um, I'm going to make a slight adjustment to the agenda, and usually we would do um, kind of council announcements um, first, but I'm actually going to ask Mayor Narkowitz um, if he would like to provide his communication to us first uh, before we speak. Um, we're we're always happy to have you join us, Mayor Narkowitz, but I'll, I'll say that we've maybe never been happier than now to have you be with us. Well, thank you, um, Council President, and thank you to the members of the Council, and thank you to uh, the members uh, of the public at home. Um, I am coming to you live from my isolation chamber, um, but I'm feeling healthy and strong, and I'm hoping to uh, hoping to be able to end my isolation soon once I receive clearance. Um, but I am continuing to work and continuing to be in touch with um, city officials around the clock. I want to thank um, I want to thank all of our city employees who have been working to adapt to this new environment that we are now working in. Obviously, city buildings remain closed. Um, we do have um, obviously not for our public safety employees who continue to uh, carry out their work um, and be often uh, most at risk. Um, during this pandemic, um, but we are working and have been working to find ways to be, continue to serve the public uh, remotely. Um, we have spun off many of our departments into remote access, to remote phone access. Um, we're continuing to maintain all of our administrative and financial functions, um, and we obviously are working around the clock in trying to respond um, and keep our community safe during the pandemic. Um, I have been having uh, daily uh, uh, emergency management team calls, um, and today we held a uh, department head meeting for all city departments to check in with all of our city departments. Um, and I'm really pleased and proud of the work that they're doing under the circumstances um, to try to uh, continue to serve their constituents, uh, whether it's our Parks and Rec Department who's helping uh, to encourage people uh, to, to find ways to safely recreate, um, as well as working with people who have to cancel and receive refunds uh, for camps and for other uh, sports, uh, to our senior uh, services department who are doing uh, check-ins on all of uh, the seniors that they serve, who they know are isolated and vulnerable, um, as well as helping to provide resources and, uh, and even a bag lunch program to all of our other departments who are working very hard uh, to address the needs of our constituents. Um, we encourage people to continue to visit our website, uh, to call our offices. We have a COVID-19 page that is, that is updated um, almost hourly uh, with information on the various orders that have been issued either by our Board of Health um, or construction orders or the governor's orders or any other information uh, we want people to have as much real-time information as possible. Um, I have remained in close contact with our state uh, officials, both our legislators, um, as well as uh, the governor's office and the executive branch. Um, I've been participating in frequent uh, Zoom calls like this um, with um, uh, the governor and lieutenant governor and mayors across the Commonwealth as we all try to work together uh, to address this uh, here on the front lines in cities and towns. Um, we are um, putting out as much information as we can. Obviously, our health department um, is also very much engaged in this. I want to commend our um, health director, Meredith O'Leary, and her team, who not only are helping um, the city of Northampton respond to the crisis, uh, but has been standing up a regional response um, to do um, um, case investigations of people who have tested positive um, across um, Hampshire County. Uh, many of our, our neighbors in our smaller towns uh, do not have the capacity or infrastructure. Um, uh, so we are helping stand that up um, using a grant from the Department of uh, Public Health. So I wanna thank them. Obviously I wanna mention our first responders as well um, who are trying to maintain safety but are in the position of having to respond um, to medical calls and to other calls uh, where COVID-19 uh, symptoms are involved. Um, I'm especially proud of our team 
uh, which yesterday, as you may know, uh, were able to open a emergency shelter at Northampton High School. Um, we've been working and planning on this uh, for uh, weeks. Um, and our, uh, the goal was to work with our partner ServiceNet, um, who was trying to maintain safety at its two uh, shelters, the Grove Street and Interfaith Shelter, uh, but we made the decision uh, to work with them to close those two shelters and transfer their shelter operations to Northampton High School. Um, we are continuing to work out many of the issues, um, but I'm really proud of our city uh, and proud of our staff and proud of all of the uh, volunteers who have stepped forward, not only to uh, volunteer their time, uh, but to volunteer supplies, um, to volunteer in some cases our local institutions who are helping uh, feed the residents of this shelter. Um, so we are entering night two um, and we are hoping that we can continue to keep um, those members of our community who do not have housing uh, safe uh, during this uh, during this COVID-19 outbreak so that we can help prevent the spread of the virus. Um, in terms of what we continue to urge people to do, we obviously urge people to continue to stay at home, uh, to shelter, to um, avoid uh, social contact and to practice good social distancing and good social hygiene, continue to wash hands, um, and to continue to be very judicious in the trips that you make outside of your home. Um, we continue to watch that curve. We continue to see um, from our state leaders that we are about to enter a very challenging next uh, several week period where we believe the cases are going to begin to spike and we are very concerned about the impact that that will have on our healthcare system here locally on Cooley Dickinson Hospital. Um, so we are working with them uh, to try to make sure that they have um, contingencies in place if in fact we do have that a major increase in patient load, but we can do our part as members of the community to lessen that load by keeping ourselves and our families healthy, by staying safe, by staying um, close to home, um, and to really following these guidelines around social distancing. Um, we hope to be able to announce some additional um, um, information to the public soon about some of the deadlines that I know people are concerned about uh, for payments of certain uh, uh, bills uh, like tax bills and uh, filing for abatements and things like that. I am ready to um, uh, ready to release that information. Unfortunately, um, our state legislature is seems to be um, in a bit of gridlock right now on giving mayors the authorization to do that. The governor filed the bill well over a week ago, um, and unfortunately, the bill is. Um, log jammed in a conference between the House and Senate. Um, so we are hoping that that conference uh, can be broken so that we can um, give some uh, people some measure that they have some additional time uh, to be able to pay um, some of the required, uh, statutorily required uh, local uh, bills. We continue to work very closely with our local business community. Um, I was on a conference earlier this uh, week with uh, leaders in our business community. Um, we are working closely with our um, community development uh, uh, block grant um, office um, to try to access the additional funding that we hope to be receiving uh, from the federal government. Um, and we are working to make sure that all of our businesses um, have access to all of the resources that are gonna be made available through the state and federal government. Um, we obviously um, are also working to help support those businesses that are trying to maintain uh, takeout and delivery service. Uh, we appreciate all the members of the public who are working in their own way to try to support these businesses, either through that takeout or delivery service or buying gift certificates. Obviously, our, our small businesses are the, are the lifeblood of our community and our economy, and we want to do everything we can to support them. We also want to keep people safe. So. Um, that is a quick update in terms of the city. Again, I encourage everyone uh, to please uh, follow the city's uh, COVID-19 page, uh, which has uh, lots of information that's being added uh, daily as we uh, gather it and compile it. Um, I ask you to uh, follow our social media feeds for updates. 
um, I ask you to please take care of yourselves and your family and to please check in on uh, neighbors um, who may be isolated and alone. Uh, give them a phone call, make sure they're okay. Uh, we all have to take care of each other as a community and the way that we're gonna stay safe and stay healthy as a community is by taking care of ourselves, our family um, and our entire community. So I thank the council uh, for allowing me this opportunity to update the public. Um, and obviously I thank all of our city staff and first responders and obviously our medical personnel at the hospital. Um, and I thank the residents uh, for their cooperation, their vigilance um, and their work to keep themselves and their families safe. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Norkowitz, for, for that update. Um, and so uh, I'll just, I have just a couple words and then um, I'll go around to counselors to see if they have any updates or um, announcements. Uh, you know, I just want to say that, you know, we just heard from Mayor Narkowitz and we know that the city and the state remain in a state of emergency. And that doesn't mean that our work as counselors stops. Um, but it does mean that we need to be very careful about not diverting resources from essential and emergency business. Uh, and resources are very much, they very much include time. So, um, you know, I take every opportunity to say that the people who work for Northampton are the most dedicated and skilled people that I can imagine. Uh, but now more than ever, I think that that really bears repeating. Um, during this crisis, their tireless around the clock commitment um, and the tremendous efforts that they're making uh, are, and you know, as was just told us by the mayors, um, some of them are just really, they truly awe me. Um, and, you know, I, I thank the council for their recognition of that and asked them to continue to limit their requests of city staff. Um, and I also really thank counselors for the work that they are doing, fielding residents' questions, serving as a point of connection for people and their wards as we work together, as the mayor said, to check on those who um, are isolated and, and may need extra help. Um, and also for sharing the ever changing and expanding information and resources that are being created. Um, I know that we are very ready and willing to help and, uh, and I ask Northampton residents to please call on us if needed. So thank you all for the work that you're doing and for, um, for being mindful of the work that others are doing. Um, counselors, um, are there, do we have updates from committee chairs and then counselor, Oh, okay, um, let's do updates first and then we will go to one minute announcements. Councillor Labarge, I see your hand. Thank you. Um, I would like to announce the City Services Committee meeting on Monday, April 6, 2020 has been canceled. In keeping with the spirit of deferring non-urgent items, the May 4th meeting will also be canceled if no new appointments are referred. A decision will be announced at the April 16th City Council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Secondly, that's okay. Because of the coronavirus emergency, the Disabilities Commission will not be meeting in April and probably not in May. The work of the Disabilities Commission, however, continues as the city advances some of the priorities that the commission has already set. Thirdly, I wanna thank our mayor and his staff, the director of Department of Public Works, Donna Lascalia and her essential staff, the board of health director, Meredith O'Leary and board members, police chief, Jody Casper and all her policemen and women. Fire De Department Chief DeBain and his staff, Central Service Director David Pomeroitz and his essential staff and all the custodians in our city and all other essential staff, thank you dearly. I wanna thank all the educators for giving our students the education they need at home. Thank you for who you are, all our educators. I wanna thank all the doctors and nurses and staff at the Cooley Dixon Hospital they are working tirelessly helping people who are stricken with this coronavirus. I wanna thank our council president, Gina Louise Shera, Bill Dwight, counselor at large, and our council clerk, Laura Kretzler, for working extra hard at this difficult time 
we are all in. As city councilors, we are working hard along with our residents in this city to minimize the spread of the coronavirus. Please, I ask all residents in Ward 6 and in our city to continue practicing social distancing, stay six feet apart, stay at home, and wash your hands often with soap and water for 20 seconds. And that is critical. With schools closed and all your children at a home, parents have their hands full, giving their children many days filled with learning, laughing, fun, and most importantly, safety. I have many residents I know as a city councilor who are elderly and at risk due to health reasons. I care about them and call them to make sure they are okay or if they need any help. This is a crisis in our city with many of our businesses struggling badly to make it through this crisis. And we just did hear our mother, our, our mayor say how critical it is for all of us in the community to get together to support our businesses and especially our small businesses. Many people, which I know even on my ward, have lost their jobs and have applied for unemployment due to this crisis. They are in need of help badly. They are losing income they need to live on. Also, I, I want to say that I, as a city councilor, am helping a friend, Patty Haley, who's an RN, and the MMA nurses with a donation box on my lawn. And I have had some people who have stopped by and placed donations to, for it to go to the Cooley Dixon Hospital. So please help me to help our Cooley Dixon Hospital and their doctors, RNs, and all medical staff to be safe. And remember, stay safe, and we are all in this together. And Mayor, I'm very happy that you're on the road to recovery. And also, Councillor Nash, it feels great to see you sitting in that chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Labarge. You're welcome. Other counselors with uh, updates or announcements? Okay. I'm going to go to Councillor Nash. I see you over there. Are you muted? I'm muted. Hey, nope. um, I just want to thank everybody for their support for while I my wife and I were sick, um, that um, it was long and harrowing. And it's really great to be back. I tell you, hopping on Zoom today earlier with GL to just to try this out. Um, uh, Hermie and Laura, I, I, I felt like I was back in the world again. And um, anyway, and you know, and most importantly, I want to thank everybody for um, respecting our privacy while we were sick. Uh, that um, when you're when you're ill, um, you know, sometimes it's a good time for people to kind of stay away and give people space. And uh, both Dora and I really appreciated that, and we're we're I we're both very happy to be back. We got the clearance uh, two days ago to be able to we're, we're virus free and can venture out into the community. Uh, with social distancing. Um, so we're happy to be back. Thank you. We're very happy to have you back. Um, <laughs> Councillor Maori. Hi, yeah, I just wanted to um, let you know that I was having computer problems and switched uh, computers. So uh, please be patient if there's any more issues. I'll try to um, attend to them and get back on. Okay, I'll tell you um, that I can hear you great, but you are frozen at this moment. Oh, that's too bad. Can you see this? I wanted to make an announcement. Uh, I can't, oh, yes, now, yes. Okay, I was hoping this would work. There's a, a, a handy turn off mirror image uh, setting in video so that it wouldn't, wouldn't project the opposite. <laughs> but I want to let everyone know that Cooley Dickinson now has a call center around COVID-19 concerns, uh, health concerns, uh, that is now open. And I talked to them today. They were, uh, it, was a, it was great to touch base. And they have really uh, long hours, 8 to 5.30 p.m. 
I'm sorry, 8 to 6.30 p.m. Monday through Friday, and on the weekends, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So I hope you all take advantage of that if you have any uh, health concerns or, or concerns about COVID-19. Excellent. Thank you. Do you have anything else? Or, no? Thank you. And thank I, I wondered what that feature meant, and now I know what that means. So yeah. uh, I appreciate that, too. Um, Councillor Jarrett. Hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to give an update from uh, two weeks ago. I talked about the Western Mass Community Mutual Aid, and they now have a website. It is WMACMA.org. And they are connecting um, people in neighborhoods through a series of neighborhood pods to make sure that uh, everyone <coughs> uh, gets the is checked in on, um, especially those residents uh, over 65, and um, meeting whatever needs that people are expressing, and also whatever volunteer needs. They're, so they're matching up people, um, and just wanted to reiterate that uh, I. I am here if you have any questions or concerns. Um, and that's been the majority of, you know, my job as counselor over the last couple of weeks has been answering people's questions and trying to get that information out. And I'm happy to keep doing that and to help you um, in connecting with other people in your neighborhood too. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Maori, I see you're back up. Well, you know, I realized I neglected to say the number uh, out loud for those on the phone. I believe I didn't say it. So let me just quickly say the number for the COVID-19 Cooley Dickinson Call Center. 1-88-554-4234. 1-88-554-4234. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Other counselors? Okay, seeing none, um, we will move to the consent agenda. There's only one item. Minute. So um, there's no need to ask for removals, but um, I will ask it, does anyone, um, we need a motion on it and- uh, move. Move to approve the uh, consent agenda. Okay. Made and seconded. Um, is there any discussion um, or any uh, amendments to the consent to the minutes, which is the one item on there? Seeing none. Um, all those in favor? Well, we're going to do a roll call. So, um, yes. Laura, can you do a roll call when? Sure. You get a moment. Councillor Jarrett? Yes. Councillor Labard? Yes. Councillor Mayori? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor Quinlan? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Thorpe? Yes. And Councillor Dwight? Yes. Okay. Consent agenda is approved. Um, and we will now be recessing for finance. Anyone who's new to our process, um, the finance committee uh, holds its meeting within the council meeting. So we've recessed from the regular council meeting into the finance committee. Um, and then we will go back into the council meeting once we adjourn from finance. So, um, Laura, when you get a moment, can you call the roll for finance, please? Sure. Um, Councillor Shara? Here. Councillor Labarge? Here. Councillor Quinlan? Here. And Councillor Thorpe? Here. Okay. First item is approval of the minutes from our previous meeting, which is March 19th, 2020. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion's been made by Councillor LaBarge and seconded by Councillor Thorpe, I believe. Um, any discussion? Okay. Um, so, Wait. all. So, I think uh, my understanding is that we need to do a roll call for this too. Okay. Um, Councillor Shara. Yes. 
Councillor Labarge. Yes. Um, Councillor Quinlan. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, minutes are approved. Uh, next up is um, 20.032, in order to establish water and sewer rates for FY 2021. This is the public hearing that we just had before. Um, so this is uh, order that effective July 1st, 2020, the per 100 cubic foot rates for water and sewer for fiscal year 2021 will remain unchanged from fiscal year 2020, the rates will remain as follows. Water, customers with a one inch meter or smaller, tier one consumption, zero to 16 CCF, $4.51 per CCF. Tier two consumption, greater than 16 CCF, $6.09 per CCF. Customers with a meter larger than an inch, all consumption, $5.99 per CCF. Sewer non-metered, $7.86 per CCF, based on 80% of metered water consumption. Uh, the FY19 rate was $7.67. Metered, $7.86 per CCF. FY19 rate, $7.67. So I am looking for a motion, please. Make a motion to approve the uh, water rates and water and sewer rates. Motions are made by Councillor Quinlan and I second that. Seconded by Councillor Labarge. Um, okay, so discussion on sure. the water and sewer rates. I see Councillor Labarge and then Councillor Quinlan. Councillor Labarge. Yes, um, I am very happy to hear from our mayor of no increase for the year 21. I think at this time, being such a critical time for many people in our city, that I am supporting the adoption of these rates. It's the right time to keep them the way they are and I need to look at giving the support to the many people who are under crisis of losing their jobs and with the businesses here in the city of promoting our small businesses and businesses in general. And I thank you, Mayor, um, for keeping the rights of what they are right now. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Labarge. Um, Councilor Quinlan. Uh, when, when this appeared on the agenda a few weeks ago, I had a phone call with Susan Wright, uh, who generously spent a really good amount of time with me kind of getting into some of the details of the enterprises and uh, how the uh, budgeting process works for them. And so I, I'm grateful for that uh, clarification. Her uh, you know, generosity of her understanding of it was, was great and I, and I appreciate it. I did wish that tonight as we were discussing the water rate uh, that we had uh, an idea of the projects that the stabilization funds would be devoted to. It feels like you could discuss the entire enterprise at once uh, rather than talking about the water right now and then those projects later. That said, uh, I, I echo Councillor Labarge in that I'm thrilled that the rates will, will remain consistent. Uh, no increase here, as we know, we're, we're taking the property tax increase, uh, but, but we're gonna be stable here and I think that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll, I'll just note that, you know, often when we would be discussing these rates, uh, Director Lascalia would join us um, and kind of address some of those things that you just brought up. Um, but during this moment of crisis, um, it was decided that I, I decided um, when I spoke with the mayor that it wasn't, I didn't feel like it was necessary to have her come. She's working around the clock right now on other things. Um, but you know, if there are specific questions that we need to have answered, um, the mayor is here and can speak to them. And um, you know, we could, if there's something that we absolutely need to know, we could ask Director Lewis Gallia to come ne next time. But uh, I'm trying to be very mindful and protective of of her time. So, Mayor, do you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I mean, I, I can say that um, you know we have been uh, the the uh, we are, we are continuing to move forward on the budget process um, and we um, continue to have the same projects. If you look at our 
last capital program. Um, we're working to bring forward both a budget and a capital program. We both of those have been somewhat sidetracked by what's occurred, um, but we uh, still have the $15 million in wastewater treatment plant upgrades uh, that the council already gave us authorization uh, to seek uh, uh, lending authority through the state, uh, through this clean water uh, trust fund. Um, and we are continuing to move forward with that. Um, and we still have the major um, projects in our water um, enterprise fund for uh, the work on our reservoirs, as well as our major transmission lines. Um, so those, uh, the use of those uh, stabilization funds in both of those accounts uh, will be uh, put toward those major projects, um, as has been our plan all along. Um, and we will be bringing um, some of these projects forward, we hope. Um, th there's been some delays because of uh, procurement processes, because of processing <laughs> at the state level, um, and frankly, because we're trying to understand how um, some of this construction could even move forward in the current environment. Um, but rest assured that we continue to work on all of the projects uh, that have been identified as long-term projects in the capital plan. Um, it's also important to note that the, um, you know, that the, that obviously a big part of what the water rates are supporting and the sewer rates are reporting are existing debt service. Um, a major portion of the sewer uh, enterprise fund is paying the existing debt service on, I'm sorry, the, the water rates is to pay the existing debt service on the water treatment plant uh, that, that we are paying off. Um, as well as other capital projects, and then to pay for the operational expenses of staff and equipment and materials and all of the materials that it takes to uh, run uh, the both of our uh, plants, the sewage treatment plant and the water treatment plant through other than ordinary maintenance funding. So um, I can provide more information as requested, but uh, we believe that we are able to stabilize these rates um, and we will um, bring forward additional updates on projects um, as part of the capital process as we hopefully move into the spring period and begin to bring individualized capital projects uh, forward. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Quinlan, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I just um, wanted to ask the mayor about those projects, just in terms of understanding uh, you know, you had mentioned about the, the wastewater treatment plant, the that project's been approved. Uh, and then I wondered about has the, you know, I think that if I understand some of the water stabilization uh, fund is going to construction projects on North King Street and King Street, Damon Road. And I wonder, have those already been approved? Uh, is that already advanced? Uh, and then also when we were on our tour of the DPW facilities, of course, we, we were riding on North Farms Road and talking about how that's getting uh, redone as well. And I wondered if that had already been approved also, or if that's something that we'll consider. Uh, sure. I didn't hear. I didn't Thank hear you. the last part. I didn't hear. I missed the last. The last project. Oh, sorry. It was uh, North Farms Road. Uh, North Farms Road. So North Farms Road. Um, the actual uh, funding for that was approved at the end of last year before you joined the council. Um, right. So that funding. Um, but again, we are working on the engineering process for that still, and hoping to get that those. Uh, um, hoping to get that bid. It's a, it's a bit challenging because all of the methods, typically these projects, you have a bunch of construction guys that all show up in a room and look at documents and look at blueprints and then go out to a site and visit the site. And so we're having to try to adapt how we will do that in this environment right. um, to do that safely with our engineers. But we are moving forward on those projects. Um, the Damon Road uh, projects are moving ahead. and We had begun uh, we had done all the engineering on that um, uh, earlier in advance as we were moving, as the state was saying, we're moving the, for, the project, larger project forward. As far as we know, those projects at the state level mm. will still advance. The challenge, of course, is in this construction environment. Um, we don't know what will happen um, in terms of will it be delayed because of that. Um, so those projects continue to move um, and we will continue to work at the, the um, the sewage treatment plant um, engineering and work uh, is, is advancing. Um, again, we're getting close to the point uh, where we will need to um, 
uh, advance that project in a more major way. We've actually gotten, the state has actually issued a 30 to 40, I think it's a 45 delay, delay in the deadline for accessing uh, the um, essentially zero interest financing that we we're eligible for from the state um, because everyone is in the same situation, including the state itself. So we hope to have more updates on those larger projects uh, a little bit later on in the springtime. But we are continuing to work on them and advance them. The challenge becomes the actual physical construction uh, portion of it, um, you know, particularly the indoor construction that would be required as part of the sewage treatment plant, uh, where there's going to be right. indoor electrical and other kinds of uh, work. And we don't know how that's going to mesh with uh, the current environment. So uh, that's where we are in those projects. Thank you. Thank you. Other counselors. Okay. Seeing no other questions or comments, um, I'm going to ask. Um, so remember, this is just finance. So, Councillor Quinlan, did you have something? Nope, I was just going to make a motion to move these uh, rates forward with a positive recommendation to the full council. Thank you. Motion has been made and Second. seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Okay. Um, so again, we're going to have to take a roll call for this. One second. Sorry, Laura, this is... Okay. If I knew this uh, ahead of time, I would have... Uh, oh, that's all right. Help you um, Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Um, Councillor Quinlan. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, that moves with a positive recommendation to the full council. Um, now we're up to 20.035 in order to accept a donation of land on Woodland Drive for housing and trail uses. This is... <clears throat> Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz in planning and sustainability, um, whereas David Teese has offered to donate to the city or its assignees 1.906 um, acres on Woodland Drive, map ID 42-031, with a deed in lieu of foreclosure for back real estate taxes, stormwater fees, and all interest in penalties. Whereas, consistent with the city's sustainable Northampton comprehensive plan and the open space mm recreation um, and multi-use plan, the property can subject to final due diligence uh, and to permitting by the zoning board be used for one, one time, one first time home buyer or affordable home, two, one workforce housing or market rate home, three, a potential parklet that might in the future provide a walking and bicycling path, um, a portion of the way from Woodland Lane to Tiffany Lane, ordered that the mayor is authorized to accept said deed to the four reference 1.906 acres. Further, that the city council declares that the two potential building lots sur sur surplus to the, that the two potential building lots surplus to city needs. Further, that the mayor is authorized to transfer deeds for the building lots subject to the city retaining an affordable housing restriction. Okay, that is the order. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion's been made by Councilor LaBarge and seconded by? Second. Councilor Thorpe. Okay. Um, and Wayne, there you are. <laughs> Wayne just has popped up um, to talk to us about this. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Let me start by apologizing for my bad editing. The number three should be Woodland Drive. Um, to Lady Slipper Lane. So I apologize for not catching that in the process. I know it was very confusing. So background is, this is a subdivision that was done something like 30 years ago. Um, the developer of the subdivision sold all the other houses, all the other lots in the subdivision, was left with this lot, decided that he couldn't develop it. Um, some point stopped paying taxes. Not a lot of taxes have accumulated but he's offered to the city. He doesn't think it does him any good. Um, there's, you know, we've heard from council strongly, we should always look at surplus pieces of property to see if we can do any affordable housing, any market rate housing. 
this has a potential for that. Um, what we're asking is for us to, to accept the donation of property before he gives it to somebody else. Um, and then we're due due diligence. So this is gonna be a process that's gonna be a year in the making. We need to do due diligence of the property. We need to do community meetings. We're not in a hurry to do anything with the property. We're just looking for the authority to accept the property and know that we wouldn't accept the property and know that you wouldn't want these things to happen. So we're, we're then go forward, you know, depending on what happens with COVID-19 in terms of when the community process is. Okay, thank you. Councilor Labarge and then Councilor Quinlan next. Yes, um, thank you, Councilor. Um, I had talked with Wayne about this because I was a little confused. This is on my ward and it's off of Route 66. There's two entrance way coming into um, Woodland and I went over to the second entrance way and I saw Tiffany Lane and I said, well, how are we going to make a trail getting into that? So I, I went back with Wayne again and talked with him and he said I was correct. It's the first entrance way. Correct, Wayne? Correct. And I said, okay, I understand now. I felt better about that. Um, it's just an absolutely almost two acre piece of property. And I think this is a great deal. And I really do. And I look at affordable housing, which we need to have even in Ward 6. Definitely affordable housing. And I'm supporting this. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a nice area. And I think that eventually we could look at putting a trail going into Lady Slipper Lane. Thank you, Councillor okay. Quinlan and then Councillor Dwight after. So I just wonder about what what's the value of this property and what's what are the taxes owed just in terms of just the nuts and bolts of the financial portion of it. So it's assessed at $95,000. Um, I don't have it in front of me, the taxes. It's the neighborhood of five or $6,000. Um, so it's something, but it's not a huge amount. City Council adopted in last year's capital improvement program, money that we can buy land for the value of the back taxes under the theory that even though the city is spending, writing a check, we're writing it to ourselves, the money comes right back. So what we spend on the property to pay off the taxes comes back to the city. Um, I, obviously, we need to do due diligence and we could come back later to city council with a different proposal, but we're very aware of the financial times now. And so part of the idea of saying maybe one affordable lot and one market rate lot is they both serve a need. We, we need market rate lots for, you know, some people, but also it means it can be self-supporting. The subsidies that we usually have to do for an affordable house, we would in essence get cross-subsidized by the by the market rate. So again, we could always come back to council and say, can we do something different? But we wanted to start with what seemed like a project that wouldn't cost the city anything. Thank you. Councilor Dwight. Um, that was my question. Thank you, Councilor Quinlan. Okay, <laughs> Councilor Labarge. Yes, um, if you look Sure, if you look at the order here on the second page, the one that I have, um, I, I had asked for that information from Wayne and it was assessed at 95500 and the owing of back taxes were like 5330 and that's back taxes, fees, interest, and penalties. So I really feel knowing the resident that if somebody, and I had concerns and I talked to Wayne with this, if somebody went to Mr. Pease and said, I'd like to buy that property, I think we're gonna lose something here. We're at the 5,300 and something dollars, 500, $330. Somebody could go in and buy that property and we're gonna lose out on possibly two homes, affordable housing, it's just a beautiful area. So I just wanted to clarify that because I did call Wayne on the assessment and so forth on the two acres, beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councilor Jarrett. Um, it's, I think it's great that we're uh, 
looking into creating more affordable housing. I wanted to ask um, Director Fiden uh, to define what workforce housing, because I see that it says workforce or market rate housing. So um, in order, the, the reason that Mr. Teese can't get a permit for this property is he would need to get something called a comprehensive permit, which you can only get when you're creating affordable units. So the reason we could potentially develop the property and he couldn't is we create an affordable unit. The way Massachusetts defines affordable units is the same way the federal government does, which is affordable to someone earning 80% or less of area median income. Workforce Housing for Community Preservation Act is, I believe the number is 120% of area median income, but it, other than CPA, it's not a defined term. So it basically means, you know, most of our workforce can afford the housing as opposed to being really high in housing. We specifically have a goal of saying, we not only want to create affordable housing, but we also want to think about the lower end of the market, the people being left out, who maybe don't need the subsidized affordable, but can't afford the really high end lots. So 120% of area median income is a commonly used number, but it's basically what most working class people can afford and, and not, you know, very expensive. Homes. Great, thank you. Um, I also wanted to, uh, I think the, the idea of having a trail that cuts through is a great idea. Originally, I thought this was a cul-de-sac on Tiffany Lane, but even though it's now not, not connecting, potentially connecting cul-de-sacs, it still uh, would mean that, you know, residents would not have to walk on Route 66 in order to get between neighborhoods. Um, there's one famous uh, neighborhood in Florida where two adjoining properties, uh, in order to get from one to the other, you have to go seven miles by road. And so yeah. there's, you know, we don't have anything of that nature, but whenever you're, you're developing a cul-de-sac or a you know, an area where you'd have to go out of your way to get to your neighbors. Um, it's really great to have those bicycle and pedestrian connections. That's exactly right. I, I do want to make sure it's clear. So this property would only get, take us about 40% of the way through. So by itself, we wouldn't have enough land, but it, it leaves that option open for the future. Uh -huh. Okay, other questions or comments from counselors? All right, seeing none, um, Laura, when you're ready, a roll call, please. Excuse me, Councillor Shira. Yes, Just yes. Quickly, do we have to do a motion to amend what was written or no? I have Woodland Lane and Tiffany Lane and Wayne just corrected that for number three. To Lady Slipper Lane, right? To Lady Slipper, number three. Mr. Fiden said it was from Tiffany Lane to Lady Slipper Lane, but the form okay. says something else. Um, yes, we could amend this here. So, so Wayne, the last number three, this the, it should say a portion of the way from Lady Slipper Lane to Tiffany Lane. I know it should a Woodland Drive to Lady Slipper Lane. Okay, okay. Woodland Drive to Lady. So there's no Tiffany Lane involved in this. Correct. <laughs> okay. So Woodland Drive, not Lane, to Lady Slipper Lane. Um, uh, Councilor Thorpe, are you making that amendment? I can't hear you. So is that a motion to amend? Yes. Yes. And Councilor Barge, you are seconding that motion? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, is there any discussion on that amendment? No. Um, sorry, Laura. No problem. Okay, Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, and then we need the uh, a roll call for the for the motion as amended. Okay, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Shara. Yes. Okay, that moves forward with that amendment with a positive recommendation. Next, we have 20.036 in order to accept a donation of easement for electric power to NA, N, uh, Northampton State Hospital Memorial Park. 
Whereas the city has accepted the Memorial Park at the former Northampton State Hospital to preserve the memory of the state hospital and its workers and patients. And whereas the city's mass works grant will fund certain improvements at the Memorial Park, including extending electric power to the historic fountain there. Whereas Jonathan A and Margaret K Wright have offered to donate an easement for said power ordered that the mayor is authorized to accept said easement on behalf of the city. Okay, so that is the order. I'm looking for a motion. I'd like to make a motion. Motions been made by Councillor Barge and Second. seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Um, anyone from the city want to talk about this? Sure, I, I will as well. Okay. Um, so when mass development laid out Village Hill, um, they set aside land for Memorial Park. Um, and built the infrastructure in Olander Drive and the sidewalk in Olander Drive to serve all the neighborhood. It wasn't anticipated at the time that there would be an electric need in the park, so no electric service was provided there. To do electric service from the road would be very disruptive and very expensive. Um, and so the rights have generously offered to allow us to run power from a transformer on one side of the house, through the front of the house, all the way to the park. Um, and so it's much less expensive for us and much less damaging for other things. So we'd like to accept that. We received this $950,000 grant, which is primarily to extend infrastructure to North Commons, which is a new affordable housing project <coughs> in the hospital. Um, but as part of the process, we, we said we also wanted to pay for part of the Memorial Park. Um, we opened bids yesterday um, and bid estimate of $810,000 of work our uh, apparent low bidder was was less than seven thousand dollars. So it's for all the horrible things going on now. It's actually a great bidding environment, um, and so this does allow us to move forward and work all with state funding. Okay, thank you, um, Council Labarge. I see your hand. Yes, um, I I am really happy about this with the city that has accepted the Memorial Park at the former Northampton State Hospital especially there is so much history and memory there of many workers locally here from our city of Northampton, still some of them who are living here. And patients, I, I've seen patients here in the city of Northampton that used to be their home at the state hospital and now out in the community. I, I am just very pleased and I also want to thank Jonathan and Margaret White. Um, for their offering to donate that easement for this said power to be placed. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions or comments? Uh, Councilor Jarrett. Uh, what is the electric service for? So the, there's going to be a fountain. Um, obviously, the city doesn't have to operate it in bad economic times but we want to leave the option open. So there'd be a, basically the old fountain that was there when Old Main was torn down. If you look at all old photos, you see the fountain was there. Um, this is exactly where that fountain was. And so it will have power and can recirculate water through the fountain. Okay. Councilor LaBarge? Yes, um, Wayne, is that fountain still there or is it somewhere, place somewhere else? The base is there. Um, and the metal work is at a foundry or everyone does metal work for a foundry. Okay, because that fountain has a lot of history to it. That's correct. Okay, other questions or comments? Seeing none, um, roll call when you can, Laura. Sure. Councillor Quinlan? Yes. Councillor Thorpe? Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, that moves forward with a positive recommendation. Moving on to 20.038, an order to appropriate $3,000 in CPA funds to Lathrop Community for Invasive Species Removal. Um, ordered that, whereas the Lathrop Community submitted an application for Community Preservation Act small grant funding for continued priority invasive species removal at its north and east campuses, on both of which the city holds permanent conservation restrictions. 
whereas the project will continue to help improve and preserve the health of sensitive habitats in the Parsons and Broadbrook watersheds as strong community support and will continue to leverage private funds and extensive volunteer efforts. Whereas the project's control and removal of non-native invasive, ja invasive Japanese Barbary, Oriental Bittersweet, Multiflora Rose, Winged um, uh, Garlic Mustard will complement city efforts to reduce invasives in critical areas. Whereas the applicant has welcomed public use of its popular trails and will continue to increase public knowledge of the trails on the property as part of this project. Whereas on February 5th, 2020, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend $3,000 in Community Pres Preservation Act funds to be used to support this project. Now, therefore, be it ordered that $3,000 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to the Lathrop communities for the Invasives Removal and Education Project and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the mayor and city council. Specifically, $3,000 is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserve. Okay. So that is the order that is um, one of, I think, two CPA small grants funds that we're gonna discuss. I see Sarah LaValle's here. Uh, so that's the order. I need a motion and a second. Make a motion. Motions and made by Councillor Barge and seconded by Councillor Quinlan. Okay, it's nice to see you, Sarah. You're muted. Come on. Yep. yep. Okay, I'll stop okay. touching. We're both <laughs> muting at the same time. All right. <laughs> All right. Good to see you as well. Hope, hope everyone's doing well in this interesting time. Um, so I came before the council earlier in the year to talk about some larger Community Preservation Act recommendations. Um, the, the two that are before you tonight are part of the small grants process. The committee established this a few years ago to try and um, fund some discrete projects from some applicants that maybe the, the committee hadn't been seeing um, previously. So this one is an application from Lathrop Communities who's also a past recipient. Um, they're looking to continue their free 50 project. They have a 50 acre um, area on their north campus or east campus, who's, uh, who, which is completely free of invasives. They they've done a tremendous amount with volunteer work. Um, they've, they've been able to do a lot with really very little and the community preservation committee thought it was important to continue to fund that. Um, this, this may be the, the last application they're hopeful that after this, they'll be able to stop using their consultant and just be able to continue with volunteer work. Thank you. Question. Right, okay, Council the Barge. Yes, um, I talked with um, Sarah Lavalle this week, and I thank you, Sarah, um, for giving me the information that I was looking for. Um, I don't know if people really know about this, but there are rare, really rare turtles at the Route 9 site. And they thrive in these grasses and sandy areas that are adjoined to the streams and the wetlands. And I really feel at the $3,000 on this small grant is very, very helpful for the brush hogging that will be done as part of this project. It's extremely, extremely valuable that at that $3,000 that we help the rare turtles at that Route 9 site. I also feel that I think like with the Lathrum and their purpose is to continue working with their consultant, which they have been doing. And um, I'm gonna support this. I, I just think it's something that needs to be done to save these rare turtles and keep the, um, the streams and the wetlands to be the way they should be in their natural state. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Nash, I see you. Uh, your, uh, your camera angle and swiveling makes me feel like I'm in an IMAX. So thank you for that <laughs> little uh, trip to the theater. Hello, um, Sarah. Uh, uh, the, um, I, I am assuming that this is gonna involve some application of Roundup to address the invasives. Could you speak to that? And 
Also repeat, I, I right at the end there, you said that this might be the last year that they need to bring in this consultant. Um, but mostly could I just, could you repeat to, you know, the, the efforts and pains they go to around um, application of, of uh, defoliants? Sure. Um, so Lathrop community was very clear with the Community and Preservation Committee that they're only using um, uh, Rodeo, which is a glyphosate product uh, and cut stem treatment and foliar, just really targeted spray. So basically the, the minimum that is necessary to, um, to take care of these plants and that everything that can be done with mechanical means and with volunteers, they're they are choosing to do that. So this is a, a really pretty minimal application. It's a lot less than, than a homeowner would typically even be using for weed control. Um, and Lathrop has been working, I believe, since 2014 on their 350 project. Um, so they, they started out with working with land stewardship to, to address these plants. Uh, and, the, and every year they've been able to do a little bit more with um, mechanical means and volunteers, so they're they're working towards not having to employ a consultant at all. Anymore. Thank you. Councilor Labarge. Yeah, I was having some difficulties listening to Sarah. I just wanted to let you know that. Okay. Um. Yeah, apologies. I live in Charlemont and my internet is incredibly poor, so I'm, I'm doing what I can. Um, Sarah, I've found that if it doesn't if it doesn't work well, you can turn off video and that will sometimes help the audio kind of get more okay. bandwidth. But um, uh, Council of Barge, is there something in particular or something that you know that you missed? It's hard to know what you miss. Yeah, uh, because I had concerns about the um, applications that they were using. And I do know for a fact, because when they've come to us as city councilors every year, we've been going through this, but the question was, how much are they using? And I didn't hear Sarah on that. What is it a low, low dosage of that targeted application that they're using? Is, is it a low count? Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. So they're using basically the, the minimum amount that's necessary to be effective. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Anybody, any other questions on this? Nope. Councilor Jarrett. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I uh, thanks for answering the questions so far, and I hear you know on the answer that they're using the minimum amount. I wanted to bring in the work of the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction. I do highly recommend reading their final report. Um, so they recommended that uh, quote: "It is important for Northampton to consider eliminating pesticide use if deemed absolutely necessary." any pesticide should be applied with utmost care in a manner that provides maximum protection of the public. Um, and I wanted to ask, um, you know, do you feel that, that this uh, is meeting that standard? Um, and um, yeah, basically that question that, and, and how will that, how will that the, you know, provide the maximum protection of the public? Sure. Um, so Lathrop Communities was clear with the Community Preservation Committee that they've had this debate internally as well. Um, you know, the, a lot of the residents there aren't in favor of using herbicides, but they, they ultimately did decide to put the application forward and, and continue the work. Um, they are working with a, with a licensed professional um, and, and they're using the absolute minimum that's necessary to do this. And what would it take to do this in a uh, without pesticides? Is it even feasible, or is there what would the scope of work be in that case? Sure. So Lathrop Communities has a, a really dedicated volunteer base, and they're able to do a lot more with volunteers than most organizations are. Um, but based on their experience with these invasive plants and the, the recommendations of um, professionals within the community, that some of the plants really 
do need a, a treatment of herbicide to be able to be eradicated. Um, but they are working towards after that, you know, being able to do that with mechanical means as much as possible. All right, everyone. I am deeply sorry. I don't. I don't see anybody else on that I can't recognize. I've been watching very carefully, but those people had been lying in wait for a very long time, actually. Uh, sat through a lot of this meeting. Yeah, maybe they learned something. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. Let's do that. So I'm very sorry. Um, and we'll continue to figure out how to refine this process <sighs> to keep that from happening again. Um, mm. Counselor Shearer, have we, were we hacked just then? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is what happened. So, um, so I've, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And are you you have a, a record of the numbers? We can talk about that later, but I think so. No, I don't know. Yeah, you and I can talk about that later. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, you might, you might want to do a screenshot at uh, the beginning of meetings, but we'll talk about it later. Okay. Um. Uh, it, 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 it's, uh, I, I think it's worth noting to the folks who just uh, endured that um, and sharing our, our mutual shock and, and pain, actually. Um, and and what, it, what, I mean, here we are, we're struggling with this technology. The technology also makes us vulnerable to this. And it's probably worth noting that there are people out there who literally are devoting the time and energy just to do that, just to leave that much poison. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so, Councilor Sherrod, you don't owe anyone an apology, um, but we are all, I mean, I think we're all pretty much cut to the quick and disturbed by this profoundly. And I, I, you know, and we can't even focus our anger on anyone in particular because they're essentially, uh, you know, I don't know, gamers locked in their parents' basement during the the isolating in space in their horrible space. But um, I, I hope we can move on from this. I am pretty sure we can. And, and I must say, I'm afraid I must offer an apology because it was my fault. I saw some people waiting in the waiting room, knew um, <laughs> Councilor Shera was otherwise uh, uh, involved and thought I was somehow doing a favor to let people in the waiting room in. And I, so it was my terrible mistake. So well, please Laura, accept my Laura, profound if I, apology. Wait, Laura, if I may, yeah, Laura, if I don't. may, this is a public meeting. And we're thereby vulnerable in a public meeting. Now, this wouldn't occur in a public meeting where we have the opportunity to face down the people who would be saying this stuff and have the right to remove them. In this circumstance, it's a whole new universe. This is not on you. This is none. This is none anyone other than the 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 vicious people who just chimed in just for just for their little free song pleasure. That literally, I mean. Honestly, think how pathetic they are that they sat there for the first hour of a city council meeting waiting for the opportunity to say something. It's not on you. It's not a reflection of anyone who participates in these meetings by and large. It is our job and our obligation to maintain public meeting and thereby there's those vulnerabilities. And I hope, um, I hope everyone uh, can recover from this. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. And thank you for uh, telling that actually helps me understand what happened. So thank it's you. I'm like, so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Because I, had, uh, you know, yeah, I didn't, I, think I didn't you're discuss more that. Than I am in, in knowing what could possibly happen in this forum. I didn't realize. I didn't. It's, it's okay. Um, thank you. Okay. 
I think we've got it figured out. I've regained my closure. Um, Councillor Labarge? Yes. Um, I have been hearing something to the effect about Zoom and a very dear friend of mine who's here told me that with Zoom, apparently there has been a lot of hacking going on with that. Well, I don't know if you counselors have heard anything of this. This is something new to me. Yeah. Every, every form of, every variation and form of these type of meeting systems are vulnerable to hacking, particularly when we open up um, to the public. We're posting a phone number and a connection point. It's, it's a vulnerability. The trade-off is uh, to conduct uh, governance in the way that with the transparency that we require and are obliged to have, and rightfully so, uh, there is that vulnerability. And so and theoretically, all these systems like Zoom are trying to catch up and figure out a way to protect from that. And so, yeah, um, there really isn't, this is, these are the choices we have. We either don't conduct the meetings or we just uh, are vigilant against uh, vicious, ugly people. Yeah. And, and I would like to take a moment, though, to, to say how proud I am of Northampton for having uh, public comment online. I don't know that every municipality is participating in it quite like that. I know that they're probably accepting um, written testimony, but I'm I'm pretty proud of what we're doing here. And I, I think we are all aware it was it's not risk free, but um, we we all made it our one of our goals to engage uh, North, the Northampton public as much as possible. Thank you. Um, yes, and you know it, this happened to Amherst, I think also. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I am Council of the Barge. I am aware of this problem, and um, have been, you know, sort of refining our process and trying to put in as many safeguards as possible. Um, so uh, we will do our very best not to let it happen again. Although it should be noted that. I know ways of interrupting um, are constantly evolving. So we will just keep evolving with them. And um, I thank you all for um, for helping me, for pitching in and uh, helping us get through that moment and giving me a moment. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, so I we were. Still talking about um, Lathrop communities, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and I think I was just about to ask for a roll call. It didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Um, but uh, I'm going to ask again if there's any more discussion before I ask for that roll call. OK. Seeing none, we're ready for a roll call. Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That moves forward with a positive recommendation. Next up, we have uh, 20.039 in order to appropriate CPA funds for Beaver Brook Greenway Invasive Plant Control Project. Ordered that. Uh, whereas the Beaverbrook Coalition and Leeds Civic Association submitted an application for Community Preservation Act small grant funding for priority invasive species removal within the Beaverbrook Greenway on Haydenville Road. Whereas the project's control and removal of invasive plants meets goals established by the Northampton Open Space Recreation and Multi-Use Trail Plan and will promote native grassland habitat of rare and threatened species. Whereas the applicants have used Community Preservation Act funding at the Greenway effectively in the past, creating in, uh, interpretive trails in a wildlife blind, matching grant funding with many hours of volunteer labor. Whereas on February 5th, 2020, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend $3,000 in Community Preservation Act funds to be used to support this project. Now, therefore, be it ordered, that $3,000 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to the Beaverbrook Greenway Habitat Improvement Project, and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and City Council. Specifically, $3,000 is appropriated from the CPA Budget of Reserve. Okay. Um, is there a motion? 
Councilor Barge, are you? Councilor Barge, I think you're muted. I'm going to un unmute you. Can't unmute you for some reason. Councilor Barge, can you unmute? Will, I'll make a motion. Okay, the, the motion's been made by Councilor Thorpe. You're now unmuted, Second. Councilor Barge. It's been seconded by Councilor Quinlan. Um, and Sarah, you are uh, here, I assume, to talk about this as well. Yes, correct. Uh, so this is building on the work of the Broadway Coalition and the Lead Civic Association. Um, they did a lot of work to the Beaverbrook Broadbrook parcel on Route 9. This is the one directly across from the National Grid facility on, on the way north of Aitonville. They built a, a bird blind and trails and um, turned this really unused area into a, a real public asset. Uh, I encourage, encourage everybody to go visit. Um, but now that that work is done, they're realizing they do need a little bit of follow-up work to brush hog, uh, to maintain the, the turtle habitat and some very limited uh, glyphosate treatment to um, try and eradicate some predator sweep issues. Councillor Labarge. Yes, um, Sarah, this first time small grant application from the Broadbrook Coalition and the Leeds Civic Association haven't they worked together before and they work very well together? So the, uh, this conservation parcel was sort of a, a pilot program for them. Um, uh -huh. it, it turned out really well and they've been great partners and they're looking to extend that into the future. Um, so it, it, it's new for, uh, for those two organizations, but it, it started out with this parcel. Yeah, because with some of the prior funding that they had gotten before, was to work together uh, apparently with creating the walking um, the walking trails and also um, the wildlife blind at that certain area too they have worked together that's very valuable here yeah it's it's a great partnership and it's really worked out well for I think both organizations and and for this conservation parcel as well yeah and also on the brush hogging, and of that area that we're talking about now, um, how long will they be doing this at that site, especially for treating that bittersweet that is apparently a problem there, correct? Uh, so the, the bittersweet they're, they're looking to do for the, um, the remainder of, of this year and the next year and the brush hogging um, probably three years. Okay. Um, so the, there is a rare turtle species there, and this work is all being done with the permission of uh, fisheries and wildlife. So the, this will in, encourage the, the turtles to continue to use this area. If, it, you know, if, it, if we did let it grow up into a forest, then uh, the, um, they would need to do their nesting elsewhere. Thank you, Sarah. Other, uh, Councilor Jarrett? Uh, thanks, Sarah. Yeah, similar to my, the previous application, um, that in the previous application, it, it did seem pretty clear that they, the application of the herbicides would, they're hoping it will be this year and then they'll be able to maintain that. Is this um, a similar situation or are they looking at something that would be more ongoing with that? If, if anything, this would be even less ongoing than the Lathrop Communities Project. Um, Broadbrook Coalition and Lead Civic, similar to Lathrop, have a really solid volunteer base. And as we've been able to see with the work that they've already done at this parcel, um, really, this is just for bittersweet. It's all cut stump treatment. And this is absolutely necessary there. There's a lot of species like garlic mustard and, and other things that have already been treated by hand. And will continue to be. Thank you. <clears throat> questions or comments. Okay, seeing none, um, roll call on a positive recommendation, please. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, that moves forward with a positive recommendation. 
Next item is 20.040, in order to approve gift fund expenditures for emergency COVID-19 expenses. Um, upon the recommendation of the mayor ordered that the Northampton City Council in accordance with Massachusetts General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A, grants and gifts, acceptance and expenditure, authorizes the expenditure of funds donated by the public to be used for any emergency COVID-19 expenses, including, but not limited to, the establishment of an emergency shelter to serve vulnerable members of the community who lack housing. Make a motion. Motion's been made by Councillor LaBarge and- Second. Seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Uh, Mayor Narkowitz. Yes, um, so as you may have seen in some of my recent communications to the public, um, we've had a number of people who've asked for different ways that they could help support the emergency shelter that we've stood up at uh, Northampton High School. Um, some people have been able to volunteer, which is wonderful. Others have been able to donate some uh, material gifts. Others have asked if there's ways that they could just contribute money uh, to help support uh, supplies and other expenses related to the shelter. Um, and any other. So we, we immediately put out a, um, a fund um, and set it up actually um, electronically on the city's website um, so that you can actually make a donation to this fund uh, through Unipay. Um, uh, and so what this order does is it allows, it uh, essentially authorize the expenditure of those funds that are collected in that COVID-19 gift fund uh, for COVID-19 uh, related expenses. So the council's um, authorizing that under Mass General Law. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Um, would the mayor like two readings on this, Councillor President? Um, if possible, that may be good, Councillor. I mean, we are literally just began collecting funds uh, the other day. I know some donations have already come in. Um, and so if the council is comfortable with that, that would be great because between now and then we may need to access them. Um, so that's a, that would be wonderful if you would be willing to do that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Other counselors. And obviously just as a point of information from anybody watching, if you go to our COVID-19 page on the city's website, there's a big blue box right at the very top that says city of Northampton uh, COVID-19 emergency fund. And if you click on that box, it'll take you uh, to where you need to go if you wanna make a donation online. Um, or you could mail a check made out to the city of Northampton with COVID-19 emergency fund in the memo, and you can either leave it in one of our drop boxes or just mail it to the city. So those are the ways uh, we people can give who wanna to give to the fund. Okay, great, thank you. Other counselors? Okay, seeing none, uh, Laura, when you get a chance, roll call please on a positive recommendation. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Shara. Yes. Okay, uh, there's no new business. So I need a motion. Make a motion to adjourn finance. Second it. Which has been made and seconded, and we need a roll call, please. Yes, sure. Yeah. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, we are coming back into the council meeting from finance. And we will pick up with those financial orders. So the first is 20.032 in order to establish water and sewer rates for FY 2021. Move to approve. Motions been made by Councillor LaBarge, seconded by Second. Councillor Dwight. <laughs> okay. Um, any further discussion on the water and sewer rates. Okay, seeing none, roll call please, Laura, when you can. 
Cal, sir, could I just ask one question? Um, there is an extraneous that that F the, the parenthetical reference to FY19 in the sewer section is just extraneous. It probably should have been removed. Um, it's not critical, but it just it's it was there. It was part of the FY20 order and oh. just showing what the rates were in 19, and we it just got carried forward. So you'd either have to keep you'd either have to update it or I think you could just delete it. It doesn't really add much to the discussion or you can leave it one way or the other, but it, I, we didn't, I didn't notice it till tonight that it had been carried over. Okay. okay. Uh, Councilor Dwight? I, I see no harm in leaving it in for yeah. you know future informational purposes and next time I'll know not to do it rather than go through an amendment to delete or modify. That's fine. I just, that's fine. I just wanted to give you that option. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, okay, so we're back to a roll call, I believe. Okay, Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. I'm sorry, Councillor Garrett. Yes. Councillor Labon. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And <coughs> okay, that passes in first reading. Next is 20.035 in order to accept a donation of land on Woodland Drive for housing and trail uses. Move to approve. Motion has been made by Councillor LaBarge. Second. Seconded by Councillor Dwight. Any further discussion on this order? Seeing none. Roll call, please, Laura, when you get a chance. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading. Moving on to 20.036, in order to accept a donation of easement for electric power to Northampton State Hospital Memorial Park. Move approval, please. Second. Motion has been made by Councillor Dwight, seconded by Councillor LaBarge. Any further discussion on this order? Okay. Seeing none, roll call, please. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shaw. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading. Um, moving on to uh, 20.038 in order to appropriate $3,000 in CPA funds to Lathrop Communities for Invasive Species Removal. Move to approve. Move to Second. approve. Motion's been made by Councillor Barge, seconded by Councillor Dwight. Any further discussion? Oh, Councillor Jarrett. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk more about this. I. I have only had a few days to um, <clears throat> look at it. And in that time, um, I've reviewed the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction uh, report. I spoke with Chris Hellman of the Community Preservation Committee, um, and they based their decision in part on the work of the Select Committee. Um, and, you know, the Select Committee, um, <clears throat> one of the recommendations that came out of that was to ban pesticides entirely in places where children play, um, but not citywide. <clears throat> and um, I would argue that, that children do play in conservation areas. So there's, there's some uh, question there. Um, and the, the select committee has done considerable research, but that work isn't done. In their recommendations, they requested that the committee's work be continued. Uh, with another select committee to be established and also to establish a permanent pesticide reduction oversight committee. Um, so uh, I'm 
I'm feeling like I want to do some additional research on it and try to understand this better. Um, I know that, you know, one for uh, the, that um, oh, maybe it was a year and a half ago, there was a community preservation committee um, proposal about pesticide herbicides at um, the community gardens uh, by the uh, village hill. And there was a lot of opposition to that. Ultimately, the committee, I, I believe, did not forward that, that recommendation. Um, and so I'm, I, I'm interested in, in hearing um, perspectives on this. I'm definitely here that, you know, this is a very minimal application. Um, and this, this, you know, I see that some would describe this as similar to um, a, the way that we might treat someone with cancer and that we're, we're putting some poison in, um, say with chemo, chemotherapy, but ultimately it is so that they will survive and they will thrive. Um, and so in this case, you know, we're choosing to poison these plants, but the goal is to help the overall ecosystems. Um, and let's see the, um, so I also think that there's always, there's always change in ecosystems. Um, birds and other animals have transported in the past, you know, new species and caused considerable change. In this case, you know, we as a species of humans, we're doing this so much faster and that we've introduced all these changes. Um, so I'm interested in looking at other perspectives um, on, on this. I, so I don't feel ready to vote on it tonight. I'm thinking I will abstain, um, but I feel comfortable, you know, if, if it moves forward since we will have a second reading and I will have time to um, <clears throat> do more research and, and talk to more people about it. Thank you. Councilor Nash. Yeah, as a member of the select committee, I, from uh, the previous council, I appreciate what Councillor Jarrett is sharing. Um, you know, during our um, uh, limited time that we had to work on uh, pesticide reduction, we did hear considerable uh, testimony uh, uh, from both, both Broadbrook and the folks at Lathrop. And um, as well as from uh, Mr. Fiden with the planning department, and they they all spoke to the considerable lengths that they go to to not um, broadcast um, the the use of herbicide to uh, address the invasives. These the, the invasives that they're they're going after are are very uh, vibrant and they can quickly take over an ecosystem um, and that um, and that the um, that that I, for me i found that their efforts were to be lauded and um and that you know when possible they would resort to mechanical or even you know just being able to pull um uh, invasives by hand but there the, that there's this, um, there's this tipping point that they're all trying to address to take back these ecosystems from these invasives. And that, um, and that with time, and, and I think Sarah reflected this earlier, that with time um, and, and with you know, very uh, direct application, um, we're not talking about broadcasting uh, rodeo over an acre, we're talking about people going through with applicators that where they see the plant, there's a cone that goes over the plant, it, the herbicide is applied directly to the, that, per, that uh, individual plant. And um, so I, you know, I, I am not in favor, you know, of, you know, I, of, you know, spreading pesticides around but there is also, we are in this um, uh, the, that with climate change, with the change that's just going on as 
we have ch drastically changed this environment several times uh, since uh, humans have settled in in the valley. Um, that uh, that I you know I think there's times where it's appropriate, and and I I, I trust that both Broadbrook and Lathrop are are making um, efforts to minimize the use. Um, and as um, as Sarah pointed out, many people are not are nowhere near as careful when they're using uh, these products at home or on our, or on commercial properties for that matter. Um, that uh, you, you, we all go around, we see the little yellow flags, the warning flags and on the perfectly manicured lawn in front of the restaurant. And you know, it, and it's saying, don't step on this beautiful grass because there's likely uh, some something poisonous here. Um, that's not the level of application at all that's going on with with these folks. Um, so um, I you know I, I understand the reservations and yeah and and I think exploring and talking about this further is, is a good thing. Um, I I just wish that everybody took the um, the, the care that um, both Broadbrook and Lathrop take when dealing with these products. I, I, it would, we would have a different, um, uh, there would be a different amount of this stuff in our environment. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none. Um, roll call, please, Laura. Oh, wait, sorry, wait, hold up, hold up. Councilor, sorry. Um, I just wanted to make sure that um, I don't want to derail the process. Of it, and if anyone else is thinking of abstaining, um, we, we should know that I believe that there need to be six affirmative votes for it to pass. Is that correct? Because it's a financial order. Um, so, I, I don't want it to fail and then us not be able to, to talk about it. So the abstentions, if there were too many abstentions, that would, um, so I just wanna make sure if everyone's aware of that and that that is correct. Uh, thank you, yes, I believe so. Two. Okay. okay. Um, so roll call, please. Sure. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nass. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Abstain. And Councillor Labard. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That passes on first reading. Um, next is 20.039 in order to appropriate CPA funds for Beaverbrook Greenway Invasive Plant Control Project. Make a motion. Motion made by okay. Councillor Labarge, seconded by Councillor Dwight. Was that right? Yes. Um, further discussion on this order. Councillor Jarrett. Uh, similar, similarly, I plan to abstain on this one. Okay. Other questions, uh, discussion, comments? Okay, seeing none. Roll call, please. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Abstain. Councillor Labard. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. Okay, that passes on first reading. Uh, moving on to 20.040, an order to approve gift fund expenditures for emergency COVID-19 expenses. Move approval, please. 
Second. Motion's been made by Councillor Dwight and seconded by Councillor Labarge. Any further discussion on this order? Seeing none, roll call please. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Derek. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. You may have heard Councilor your parents Lowry. or other adults yes. talk about the dangerous Councilor coronavirus. Yes. Suspend the rule. I passed on first reading rule. There's a motion to suspend rules. Second. Second. Did by Councillor Maori. Any discussion on suspending rules? A uh, roll call, please, on the suspension of rules. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Move to approve a second reading. Yes. Okay, so we've suspended our rule that requires two readings on two separate days and uh, Councillor Labarge has moved second reading. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Councillor Dwight. Any discussion on the second reading? Seeing none, roll call please. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Councilor Labarge. Say it again. Yes. Councilor Maori. What happened? Councilor Maori. Oh, sorry. Yes. I'm um, trouble hearing. <laughs> yes. Councilor Quinlan. Yes. And Councilor Shara. Yes. Uh, so that passes on second reading. So Laura, I think you're having an issue that I had last time, which I'm trying to correct by keeping my head over here. Um, when you turn- Oh, they can't hear me? Gotcha. Yeah, we can't, it's hard for us to hear you. Try to relocate my paper, perhaps. That will help. You and me both. <laughs> um, okay, moving on to financial orders on second reading. 20.033 in order for FY 2020 budget transfers. Motion. But move a second. Oh boy. Okay, the motion was made by Councillor Dwight and then it got confusing. Labarge. Councillor Labarge has yes. a second. Okay. Any discussion on second reading? Seeing none, all. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Next, we're up to ordinances that have not yet been referred. Uh, 20.037, an ordinance relative to essential services and municipal facilities. Uh, is there a motion to I move to refer to legislative matters? And it is a zoning ordinance also, so would also go to planning. This would be a joint, uh, the, the, there is a discussion for a joint hearing with the um, planning committee and the council for the 23rd, Laura, is that right? That's correct. Right. Okay. okay, so there's a motion, but I need a second. Second. And it's been seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Okay, any discussion on the referral? A uh, roll call, please. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. 
Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay, that has been referred. Uh, moving on to ordinances. We're at 19.173, an ordinance to allow change from one conforming use to another without a finding. Um, this is, it's still in its, in the first reading. I'm gonna note that there has been a sentence, Laura, uh, added. That's that correct. At the end of the text is one new sentence from the order as it was read at the last meeting. Um, uh, should I, can, under one, so except for the pre-existing non-conforming dimensional elements, is that what's been added? What's been added is um, under section B2, the final sentence there before the strikeouts, it, oh, the okay. sentence is if the proposal triggers review by another board under subsection B above, no ZBA finding shall be required. This Got it. Okay. Um, so now that Laura has read that sentence, uh, what's the council's pleasure? Would you like me to, I feel like I've read this many times. I can read it again if you'd like. Um, I would like to put it on the floor and we could do the reading. I don't know if this addition is going to require an approval of an amendment. I'm not, Laura, was this uh, um, something that just didn't get included or is this just the, the, the very, the language that we incorporated to accommodate as I've described it, door number two? The, uh, right, it, it, the, it was just language that was realized was needed to fully uh, express the door number two. Um, it wouldn't hurt to amend it. Uh, I'm not sure it was put on the floor and read at the last meeting. So perhaps it's appropriate to amend it since it's been changed, yes. even though it technically wasn't a reading last time. Right, right. Um, well, since, since the language actually has never been fully incorporated, I would like to move this to put it on the floor move with, for approval. And then we we'll propose adding that language as an amendment. Um, uh, yeah, so that's my motion. There was a second from Councillor Thorpe. Uh, Jared. Councilor Jarrett, I think. Councilor Jarrett, okay. Um, uh, so, so that, uh, so it's on the floor um, and we're not gonna read, it. yeah. No, it's okay. Right. I'm sorry. Um, I was gonna, now I'm gonna propose as an amendment, the addition of the sentence if the proposal triggers review by another board or under subsection B above, no ZBA finding shall be required. I'd like to, yeah, move that that be added to this order. Okay, so the motion for that amendment has been made and I'm looking okay. for second, second by Councillor Thorpe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so discussion. I, uh, I'll note that City Solicitor Seawald has joined us in case we have um, more questions for him. So thank you for doing that. Councilor Dwight. Now, uh, for folks who are just tuning in for the first time on this issue, the, we, uh, we decided that it was in the best interest of uh, exhausting all opportunities to get new information an input about this uh, this ordinance, this zoning change. Um, there has been expressed opposition to be sure. We've also had, as you heard uh, today, at least in the one public comment was there have been also people speaking in support. Um, for anyone, I'm not sure of any councilors who, who still have outstanding questions, but I believe that there is, as far as I understand, there's no new information that I've been exposed to or experienced from anyone, uh, you know, other than what we've already heard as far as the objections supplied to this. Um, and so as a result, my position stands as I stated last time, which is my, I am prepared to uh, vote in favor of this. 
Okay, Councillor Nash. Question, did we um, did we vote on the amendment? Oh, no. No, we, no, we, did. we did not. Apologies. Um, need a roll call. Yes, so roll call please on the amendment. Councillor Jarrett, do you have something before we take this roll call? Oh, uh, well, it relates to the amendment. Is that appropriate? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just, the, the language, it seems du like it's duplicates. So it's the full languages of the last couple sentences. When no other board is required to review the proposed change, extension, or alteration, the zoning board shall make a finding as defined in 9.2b. If the proposal triggers review by another board under subsection B above, no ZBA finding shall be required. Um, mm -hmm. Is that doubling or is there another, uh, am, I, am I not getting that? Because it just says when no other board twice or or if the it, it's fine it, it's it makes it extremely clear but i just wanted to make sure i understood it correctly uh, right how about alan seawall carolyn so sort of seawall do you have any thoughts on this um, this was an amendment that was uh, suggested by Carolyn, and I, I would defer to her, but I think what she was intending to do was just to make quite explicit what is implicit in the first, the, you know, that first sentence, that first full sentence, um, and just to really nail it down. Uh, actually, Carolyn has her hand raised, so Carolyn? Uh, oops. Fully clarify. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So that's absolutely right. It's just, it was just clarifying language. Laura and I had a conversation about maybe it wasn't 100% clear that it's intent, the, what the intention was. So it's not a change in context at all. It's really, it was meant to, um, to make doubly certain that um you know there would be um a review by one board or the other but not both okay does that answer that question um councillor mayori yeah just uh leaping from that when you when it says another board but you're saying there's only two boards. I was just wondering if I'm missing a board. <laughs> um, zoning? It could be something, and it's probably zoning board. But, or, you know, it could be that there's something that I'm, might be triggered under the zoning ordinance by some other entity. But it's, oh. right, that's probably what we're looking at. It's just the zoning board or the planning board. Right. I just wanted to know if there was another player I wasn't thinking of. I see what you're say, saying. Thank you. Okay, other discussion? Councillor Dwight, uh, yeah, Councillor Dwight. Just a reminder, this is on the amendment, so, right? right? Oh yeah, any so further discussion to the amendment, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's no further discussion on the amendment, let's take a vote on that. Okay, um, let's see where we Okay. Um, Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. <laughs> Councilor Quinlan. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Thorpe. Yes. And Councilor Dwight. Yes. So. Um, so, so I'll make a motion to uh, move as amended. Second it. <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded. Okay, so <laughs> discussion now back to the 
ordinance itself. Uh, Councilor Nash. Thank you. So uh, first of all, I wanna thank my colleagues for um, uh, last time you guys met, you, uh, you, you, real, you, you acknowledged that there was a number of constituents in my ward who were uh, particularly concerned about this particular item and um, that, uh, that there was a request to have it uh, tabled until this week. And, and I, I wanna thank everybody for doing that. Um, um, I have a little statement here, um, probably going to take a little bit, but uh, here we go. Um, actually, I'm going to move to some more light over here. Okay. Um, tonight, I will be voting yes for the compromise zoning language change concerning, concerning conformity and uses. I find the new language simplifi simplifies projects into two clear tracks. Owners of non-conforming properties seeking buy right uses will go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, while owners of non-conforming lots that seek uses that fall under site plan or special permit will go to the Planning Board. I find this approach very practical. I'm afraid this decision to vote yes will greatly disappoint constituents around Dewey Court. I wanna state that my oath of office is to our city. And in my mind, it would be a violation of this oath for me to vote against an improvement such as the one before us tonight. Choosing to keep confusing, unproductive language in place because it is helpful in a particular instance, but an obstacle overall is not good governing, my job as a city councilor is to improve the city, not tie it in knots. In light of my oath, I hope people understand why I will be voting yes. Now I would like to take a few moments to address a lingering concern. We spent many years and many hours working to produce our current zoning. We first took several years to develop the sustainable Northampton plan under the leadership of office and uh, offices of Sustainability and Planning Director Fife. We then spent two years exploring ways to align our zoning with the Sustainable Northampton Plan through the, Z the Zoning Revisions Committee, of which I was a part of. We received considerable, considerable support from senior land planner Carolyn Mish. After two years of meeting in community forums, the ZRC sent recommendations and guidelines to the planning board, which then used this information to send new zoning language to the city. Once at council, the new zoning faced minimal pushback around small additions, new homes, and small developments. However, the sticking point for many, including myself, had to do with larger infill developments. The spirit of the proposed zoning seem to break down when applied to larger properties and developments. City Council at the time wisely approved the new zoning while placing a two-year moratorium on residential projects of seven or more units until better criteria was developed. During those years, I was an advocate for improving our zoning and I worked closely with Ward 3 City Councilors Owen Freeman Daniels and Ryan O'Donnell to come up with equitable regulations. I also spend time talking with any city councilor willing to have a conversation. I pushed hard for development that matched neighborhood character. I was very interested in ways to incorporate flexible design. I continue, I continue to advocate on behalf of better guidelines right to when the new criteria went to council. Only then did I throw my support behind the final proposal. There were two important aspects for me that got me to support the seven or more zoning for the URs. One was the incorporation of subdivision standards for driveways and sidewalks that better mirror streetscape, encouraging a relationship between the existing neighborhood and the new development. Secondly, all projects of seven or more units 
would require a special permit and would be subject to the scrutiny of the planning board. Armed with some clear criteria, it was my hope that special permit projects would be, sub would be subject to strong challenges from the planning board and developers would prefer to explore avenues where properties could be developed by right. There is good reason for this. Our zoning for six units or less in urban residential is extremely development friendly. Property owners have considerable latitude to add units for expand their structures. It is a path of little resistance and the resulting projects by and large match their neighborhood. But more importantly, residents are more accepting of them as new neighbors. I think because the regulations being followed apply to everyone in the neighborhood. On the other hand, neighbors of projects that go before the planning board, especially special permit, have often voiced to me, and I'm sure others have heard this concern, that there is a foregone conclusion that criteria will be adjusted to meet the needs of the developer. I have been asked on numerous occasions, Jim, is this just a done deal? Tonight, I am asking for greater scrutiny from our planning department and planning board when developers are seeking special permits. I would like develops, developers to better perceive the special permit process as the most difficult way forward. I would like neighbors to have a better sense that the city is standing up for our zoning regulations. I say this on behalf of neighbors who have gone through proposals on North Street, Olive Street, Phillips Place, Dewey Court, and elsewhere in our city. For myself, as a longtime adv advocate for equitable zoning, I would like to have a sense that an applicant for a special permit needs to make a strong case for their project to move forward. I especially would like to see the scrutiny when a buy right avenue is available for the property owner, as was the case on both, both Dewey Court and Olive Street. I would like to add here that by not dis demonstrating such scrutiny, I worry that we may be opening the city up to further legal action. Tonight, we are considering this language change as result of a lawsuit. I will be voting yes to fix this glitch in our zoning ordinance, and I am urging my colleagues to do so as well. However, I am concerned that there may be other legal vulnerabilities that the city council cannot fix if greater scrutiny is not applied in the special permit process. This in no, this in no way is meant to malign our hardworking planning department and planning board but it is meant to more deeply, for us to more deeply consider and implore both those entities to use the tools at their disposal vis-a-vis -vis our zoning regulations to give neighbors a sense that the city is standing up for them and the zoning regulation and that zoning regulations are being consistently applied. I want to be clear that I see this as a concern with process and not an issue with anyone's dedication to our city. Our planning board works very hard. They spend many hours volunteering their time for our city. Everyone should thank them for their service when the opportunity arises. I also firmly believe Ms. Mish always has the best interest of our city at heart. She too works incredibly hard and I wanna thank her for all the time she has spent with me and other counselors on this tedious zoning language. In closing, I will be voting yes to protect and improve our city. And I ask my colleagues to do so as well. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Councilor Nash. Um, other, other comments? or questions from counselors? Uh, Councillor Mayori. Yeah, I, I really wanna thank Councillor Nash um, for his uh, very thoughtful words. And I know we were all curious and wanting him to be here for this conversation. I'm so glad he could be. 
I feel like he really articulated uh, some of the feelings that I've been having through this process. Um, yeah, because I do think we all agree that we need infill in Northampton, but we, we need smart infill that we deserve as a city and our residents deserve thoughtful and smart infill. And uh, I see the planning board and uh, the zoning board as, um, as ideally the place for these conversations to land and be decided uh, because of their superior, frankly, expertise and experience um, in, in this specific area. So I, I appreciated your words, uh, Council Nash. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Labarge? Yes, um, I just want to say that um, I did talk about it at the um, last time session that we had, and I support this ordinance. I think it's in the right direction um, in our city of Northampton. And I have to agree and respect what I've heard from Councilor Nash that I was a little concerned like on Dewey Court with 15 apartments in that area. And I think we should have some kind of control that we have something that will fit into a neighborhood. And I think like seven apartments would have been adequate enough. enough. And I even talked to Carol Mish about that at that point. I had a lot of concerns about the 15 apartments there. But I think this ordinance is the right way to go for the city of Northampton. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments or discussion? Okay. Seeing none. I think we are ready for a roll call. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Quinlan. No. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Councilor Dwight. <laughs> Councilor Dwight. You're muted. Muted. I didn't mute. I I may have muted you. Oh, perfect. Yes. Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Okay. That's everybody. Okay. That that passes in first reading. Um, moving on to nineteen point one seven eight zone change petition to rezone three right avenue from urc to gb urban residential c to general business this is, approval please second. uh motion's been made and seconded by councillor dwight and councillor labarge um this is a second reading any further discussion Oh, okay. Uh, Councillor Jarrett. Um, I just wanted to say I'm having some internet trouble. Um, and so uh, I may call in on an unfamiliar number. So uh, if that is, if I get kicked off again, so just so that you know that that may happen. Okay. Um, do you, so I'm very, I've, seen people trying to come in and I'm now very wary of letting people yeah. in as you can understand. Um, you have my my phone number. Do you want to text me that number so I'll recognize it? Yes, I'll do that. That would be great. Thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Nash. Thank you. Um, this, uh, this parcel is in Ward 3 on Wright Avenue. I think this is a great use. Uh, this is a great change so that uh, Netta can um, uh, it, it, it expand their parking for their employees. I think it matches in many ways what's going on directly across the intersection at the um, at Northampton Liquors. I, I think it's fine and I'm gonna be voting yes. 
Thank you. Other discussion? Okay, seeing none, um, roll call, please. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, that passes in second reading. Moving on to 20.004, an ordinance for rezone non on street parcels from NP to CP, a neighborhood business to central business. This is a second reading. Move approval, please. Second it. This has been made by Councillor Dwight and seconded by Councillor Labarge. Um, Councillor Nash, is your hand up for this or did I just neglect to take it down before? Okay. Councillor Nash? Hello. Um, Hello. Yeah, I, so I, uh, I missed first reading on this uh, because I was ill. Um, I, um, let's see, you know, um, so first of all, I just want to address the, um, the overall change for the, for the several parcels to central business. Um, I've had, uh, Carolyn spent considerable time with me on the phone earlier this week, and it was really helpful. And, um, and I am supportive of these, of changing these from neighborhood business to central business. One of the key components is that neighborhood business will be going away, um, that um, it's, it's a zone that uh, really doesn't fit the way we're developing right now. Uh, the second uh, piece, and it starts to wind into the, 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 the aspect that we've gotten a lot of feedback about is that the three new business zones, whether it's central, general, or entranceway, or highway, which highway business doesn't fit here, um, all uh, permit uh, nightclubs um, by right. So the, the, the direct, we don't have another business type zone where we can go where that um, the permission of a nightclub would be denied. So that's the first thing I would like to say. Um, the, um, I, I, I am hopeful that we are on track to rectify a, a long history of things not quite lining up, that the, the history of, of, of how things have developed at the World War II Club, um, there's, there's a bit of mystery around um, how they, they got permission to open up a, um, a club serving liquor without actually having, there's no record um, Carolyn reported this to me that um, of, of city council actually ever taking that vote. Um, that I, you know, it, so I am, I am hopeful that once this uh, passes and we get our form based codes, which uh, Carolyn is working on, and I'm really, um, I, I'm very interested in seeing come our way in the fall that we can finally get everything to line up, that the zoning along with the design standards for the street will finally match up and, um, and, and we can move that one particular property from uh, having so many crazy kind of threads that weren't tied. Um, the, the other thing is I wanna say to uh, any constituents that um, I will, uh, be uh, uh, reaching out to the licensing board um, in terms of any rowdy late night activity, which I know a number of people express concerns about. Um, that um, I had a very uh, productive discussion with the potential new owner and um, that Signature Sounds uh, does not have a history of having people who wanna stay out till two in the morning and, and close down the bar. Generally, when, when they have uh, entertainment, people are 
um, heading home uh, 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Maybe with this particular venue, they might stick around and have another cocktail or something, but that, um, that the crowd that it would attract would not be one that, um, that neighbors are most concerned about. But again, I will be uh, reaching out to the licensing commission to make sure that, um, that issues don't arise. Um, the, the last thing is that um, in my discussion with the potential new owner, um, the, um, the issue, uh, we discussed the issue of parking. I think that there is inadequate parking for um, this uh, particular business. Um, they have parking for 60 cars around the, the, the World War II club. Uh, the, it was expressed that, oh, but the, that there's plenty, you know, that there's overflow into the neighborhood um, that would fit. I, you know, there's no parking on Con Street. There's very little on Fruit Street. You, you might find some on Wilson, but there's no way that, you know, we're, we're talking 250, maybe 300 people, including staff. Um, even if everybody's sharing a vehicle, we're still talking 150 cars. We have 150 or so vehicles that aren't quite accounted for. Um, there is, a, a, I, I did suggest to um, Signature Sounds that they explore talking with some of the nearby private property owners, uh, such as Webbs and the, the, the other businesses just up Smith Street. There is actually plenty of parking there, but it isn't public. And, and I wouldn't want to have an arrangement where people are expecting that they can park on private property and then we end up with people being towed. I, I do think there is an opportunity for a very um, good relationship because the, all of those spaces are empty at night. And, um, and that it would be, uh, it, it seems it would be a great match that during the day, they, those spaces on Smith for those businesses are used by customers. And then at night when they go home, uh, that um, the uh, clientele of Signature Sounds could use those spaces. So anyway, these are all things that I'm working on and I want constituents to know that. And um, as I vote, yes on this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Dwight. And I just want to be clear and Councilor Nash uh, as noted wasn't wasn't there for this part of the conversation but um, the, these have been two difficult conversations because they're uh, they uh, touch upon two potential projects to um, uh, but the fact is is that we have to remind ourselves, and I, I actually think that Councillor Nash's explanation discussion in both these instances is valuable, particularly because he's speaking to constituents that he serves, but we're not actually voting on projects specifically. We're voting on zoning that might allow for these projects to occur. In each case, the Dewey court issue may be moot and may not be happening anyway. Um, Signature sounds is not a done, uh, not a done deal, and uh, we're not voting on whether the signature sounds can become a nightclub. We're voting on whether we're going to have zoning that would actually allow that to occur. But that's, you know, that is the essence of these is not the motivations of the projects, although they influence the discussion. That to be sure, but we make zoning not specific to any applicant or any particular process or or proposal that's pending. And I, I want the public to understand that, that we're, we're voting on a law that applies to any and everyone who comes within the, the uh, regulations of this law. And so, so I, I just want, I want that to be clear as we go forward and we make our vote, that we're not voting for a nightclub, we're not voting for or against a project at Dewey Court we're voting for zoning that applies in a particular area that's supposed to make sense. And if it doesn't make sense to you on the whole, don't vote for it. If it does make sense, if you if you agree that the, uh, the planning board and the planning office have taken this into consideration and are moving appropriately, then I think your vote should be yes. 
Okay, thank you very much for uh, for noting that. I was going to note something similar. Um, Councillor Nash, again. Yeah, I, I want to thank uh, Councillor Dwight for clarifying that. I was uh, I was working hard to keep the two separate there. That the the first aspect of what I was saying had to do with the zoning change. And the thing is that the the whole the discussion is so tied together um, that um, you know that the focus of the 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 uh, second half of what I shared was basically around constituent service and, and what, um, you know, as things move forward, what I as a counselor can do, you know, to um, help uh, meet constituents' concerns. And yes, the, I am voting with them not tied together. <laughs> Thank you. Other comments? Okay, seeing none, roll call please. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Moving on to 20.005, in order to amend the zoning map on Old South Street and Clark Avenue. Move approval, please. Second it. The motion's been made by Councillor Dwight, seconded by Councillor Labarge. Any discussion on this second reading? Okay, seeing none, roll call please. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Nash. Yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Uh, 20.006, an ordinance to amend zoning map to add new smart growth overlay district at Laurel Street. Move to approve. Second. Motion's been made by Councillor Labarge, seconded by Councillor Dwight. Discussion on the second reading. Okay, seeing. None. Roll call, please. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. <clears throat> Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. That passes in second reading. 20.024, an ordinance to change CBAC map to include cons, street, lots, rezoned to CB. Move to approve. <clears throat> second. Motion's been made by Councilor Labarge, seconded by Councilor Dwight. Discussion on the second reading. Okay. Seeing none. Roll call, please. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. And Councillor Shara. Yes. Okay, that is everything on our agenda, unless I've missed something. I hope you'll point it out to me. Um, I have no other business. Uh, before we adjourn, I just wanna say a quick thank you to you all uh, for helping out when I needed it. Um, it's nice to know now, you know, more than ever that we have each other's back. So thank you very, very much. I felt very supported, so thank you. And I will, um, uh, I will, Entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second.
It's been made and seconded by okay. Councillor Mayori um, and uh, made by Councillor LaBarge. We're going to have to have a roll call for the adjournment. Okay. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Be well.